Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the Dog on the Floor, and today we're going to be starting our next rewrite of the Live View project. Now this is going to be packed with a lot of new features for Live View 0.18, and this is the version that has things like Tailwind, like verified routes, and new syntaxes for functional components and live components. This is going to be an informative episode, so let's get started. For this video, what I'd like to do is walk you through a little bit of the program that we wrote for Programming Phoenix Live View. Essentially, we had a series of puzzles made of pieces on the left to form a puzzle on the right, and I want to point out a list of Live View features that improved the way that we worked with the software in the application. Now, I want you to get a sense for the sophistication of the application. So we're going to pick a puzzle, then we're going to place a pentomino, then we're going to drop it, and then we'll place another one, and then we're going to drop it down. And in this way, we'll be able to work through a series of pieces until we fill out the puzzle. Now, there's a lot of complex content, and our ability to layer the concepts in this puzzle are going to impact how efficient that we can be when we write the program and later when you come behind to read the program. So what we're going to do is look at some of the new Live View features that will help you manage those things. If you've been following us on Groxio, you'll recognize this as an Elixir application, specifically a Phoenix one. And one of the files in here is this mix.exs, and that defines what a particular application is. And what I want to point out is a couple of different highlights here, mainly that we are updating the version of Phoenix Live View to 0 0.18, and that's the most recent Live View as of this writing, and also that we are using a CSS framework called Tailwind. Now, Tailwind is one of the so-called utility CSS frameworks in which each individual style that you apply through a class is a small utility. Let me give you an example. So in the user interface, I have this heading three tag, and it has a class where I say I want the text to be twice as large, or I have this div tag, and this is going to be a grid where the grid has two columns and the hover is going to look like this. It's going to impact the background. It's going to turn it the color of slate with an opacity of 300. And that's what's going to give us this effect. If I go back to my picker, that slate is that bluish grayish background when I click it. And in this way, I can apply tiny utilities and mark those things up. But I'm sure that you've noticed that one of the things that this does is that it basically adds a lot of ceremony to the individual div here. And that makes it very important for us to be able to wrap up things in a way that allows us to reduce the ceremony and apply the styling in a different layer. And that's going to be with components. And we'll talk about those next. You might have noticed that the very first element on the screen looks a little different than the ones that we've typed in the past. Where we used to have an Elixir style syntax that looks something like this, percent equal, and then a function link, and then argument one, where maybe these things are the URL and the, the string, this is the link text. It looks something, well, it looks exactly like this. This uses much more like an HTML style of parameter passing where you have an argument equals title. And then I have that over and over. And this style is going to allow me to produce functionality that's a little bit more HTML like. like for example, Sometimes HTML tags have customizable text in the middle, and this is going to be called a slot in terms of Phoenix components. And also, this is going to allow us to build sophisticated features that layer components, but don't force us to break away from the HTML style of application layering. And so we're going to look at a couple of individual components. 
first a few that are generated by Phoenix, and then some that we built for the application next. But before we do that, let's look at one last feature that's wrapped up in this link. Now you might not have noticed it, but in front of this string, there's this little sigil P detail. And what that does is call a function called verified routes, which passes this string into our router table and verifies it to make sure that this is a verified route. Now, I don't know if you're one of these people, but many people, instead of using all of the route helpers, which are much safer, they use the string version of these routes because they're much cleaner to create. Now, the problem is that when we use routes like that, we don't get the help from Phoenix to make sure that those routes are valid. We're going to get the simplicity of specifying a route in a string so that it's easy to scan for programmers and the power of looking this up in a router table and making sure that this is actually a valid route. That's really a beautiful piece of software engineering. Now, let's check out one of those core components. Let's dive into some of the components that we use, like for example, one that builds us a modal dialog. For example, if I go over here to my application, I have some generated code that lets me manage a list of products. And if I click this new product, I get this pop-up modal window. Now, inside of this, this is a component that's a live component, and that means it has to manage things like events, like something changed on the form, like somebody submitted the form. But the outer form is just a pure HTML modal that uses JavaScript to show and hide individual elements on the page. And we're going to look at what that looks like. So I need to come over here to my editor, and in the editor, now I can look for the implementation of that modal page, and that's in something called core components. Now it's interesting because this was generated from the live view generators. So if I go into the core component, I have a modal. And notice a couple of things here. First, I get to specify all of the attributes in their type information. Now, this does have an additional weight of ceremony on us. We have to identify the individual attributes on a page that the caller must pass in. And this is important because you remember that we don't have a fixed number of arguments anymore. We pass all of them into a single assigns, which is a map. The second thing is that there are these elements called slots, and they allow us to represent the data, the custom HTML, for later rendering, which might also have slots and things like that. But we allow these elements to be captured between tags. So for example, the code that is between the modal tags is going to be an inner block. The code between the colon title tags is going to be a title block, and so on and so forth. So let's see if we can find one of these slots captured or rendered. Yeah, so here we're rendering the cancel slot. And here we're rendering the confirm slot. And so on and so forth, right? This is where all of the code goes that we place between the tags, which makes a lot of sense. So we have all of this title and setup. We have the subtitle, we have the title, and then we have the main content for the modal that we're passing in. And representing code in this way gives us a couple of small benefits and a big one. The big one is that we can layer concepts with generic content that's HTML that sits between the slots. And the small benefits are that we get this additional checking of all of the attributes and slots on a page against the type information that we have provided which allows our compiler to capture more of our errors. And that's a really good thing. Now you might be asking yourself, do you have to be Chris McCord to take advantage of all of these features? How hard are they to use? Well, it turns out that you really don't have to be Chris McCord. So for example, if I'm looking at the component here, this is capturing the concept of a point on the screen. 
and one that you can click on. So we have the X and Y attributes that fill in one, one point. We fill it in a color. And so that we can click on it, we take a, a couple of values, the name, the Phoenix click, the Phoenix value. And since we're going to use this in another component, we take in a target. And all we do is plug in these attributes into the underlying data that will go onto the page. So in this case, all we're doing is doing an SVG use, which will allow us to take advantage of a point that's defined elsewhere in my stack of components. And this is going to be defined in the canvas, but everything else is just another attribute that we're going to apply on the page. And what that's going to give you is an application with better layering so you can work on one smaller piece of complexity at a time. And that's going to lead to something that's easier to maintain and easier to build. And that is a most excellent thing. From Bruce and the dog on the floor, this is Groxio Learning.